Let's start with the Rooks. I'll go with – I'm going with Tyler the Creator first. I'll go with the Creator, man. They had almost a triple-double for Tyler tonight. Seven points, nine assists, and eight rebounds for Tyler in 24 minutes. He was a guy I really wanted to see tonight. Like, we know that campaign is going to do his, his campaign thing. Like, we know he's in preseason form and he's ready to go. But it's really the extended minutes of Kolick that you want to see, you know, what he's going to make out of it. And, and I thought he was good, man. You know, in the beginning – you could tell that Charlotte's length and wingspan was bothering him a little bit. I, I thought LaMelo played some good defense on him, especially early in the second quarter when he got in. But he settled in, you know, and he really started to take what the defense was giving him. It was laborious. He had to work through it. But I, I thought he did well, man. And and once once he gets into that paint, he knows the different angles and how to play that defense, how to play the pick and roll and really set guys up. He found Huck Porty, as he usually does, found Precious for a nice one-handed alley-oop. So, I mean, you know, Tyler would, Tyler was great tonight. Shooting-wise, he didn't have it. He was 2-9 from the field, but all good. I thought he was facilitating well, got to the boards, and, you know, it was, it was this was a good test. Even though it's Charlotte, you're still playing their starters for a good portion of this game. And it was a good test for, for Kolick. So I thought that was a good job by him, just really staying patient. Patient is really the word that uh, that I can think of when I think about uh, Kolick and his game tonight. So uh, a near triple-double for Tyler Kolick. Great job by him. Huck Porty Hive, I got to give you your due. I got to go to Huck Porty Hive next, man, because next to the Kolick Hive, the Huck Porty Hive is chomping at the bit. They see the talent. They see the tantalizing skill set. He's a worker. And I think he could uh, make a case for potential rotation minutes, whether it's later on in the season or, you know, if the Knicks are in a foul trouble between Towns and Sims. I mean, between Towns and, and Precious, because I don't think Sims is going to make it. Uh, I think you could see Huck Porty early, man. And the way the roster is figuring out, we had our guy Yossi Goslin on the uh, on on the show the other day, and he talked about you know Huck Porty could be a guy who could end up getting signed, getting his two way converted to a full time contract. So that's a good sign for Huck Porty. But overall, man, just he he continues to be active. That's what I noticed the first thing when I saw him the first day of summer league. Man, he's always active around the basket. Good footwork. He's hustling like he never takes a playoff. Plays the pick and roll very well on both ends of the floor. And um, just overall hustling, man. You saw the poster that he caught earlier in this game. And, and that's Huck Porty, man. He he plays with an edge, which you like. Because some of you felt like we lose, we, we've lost that edge with the departures of Julius Randle and with the departure of, uh, of Dante DiVincenzo. So, you know, how Porty kind of gives him that edge, and you don't have Mitch either. So to a certain extent, this guy kind of brings that, that toughness that the Knicks are missing. And, you know, Tibbs spoke very highly of him in the first preseason game, and I don't think that's by mistake. So I think there's, there's a good chance that he's not only playing well in the games, but he's probably also practicing well. And so that has, uh, you know, really impressed Tibbs and the coaching staff. So good job by Huck Porty tonight. Huck Porty finished with uh, eight points, five rebounds for Huck Porty, and one assist from the big man out of Germany. How about Pacom Dadie? Dadie Hive. Was anybody expecting to see Hakom Dadie tonight after DMPs in the first three preseason games? How Puck Home Dottier comes in, and what do you know? He starts torching the Nets. So that was a welcome sight. He's running the lane well at a couple uh, at a baseline dunk. A party looked nice, and good job by Tyler finding him. A couple of corner threes. So that was a welcome sight for me, man. It was good to see because the last time we saw him in Summer League, you know, his, his jumper – mechanically looked good, but he just wasn't hitting. So you didn't really get much from him in the summer league. But, man, he came out there and started splashing. Just one game, just one preseason game, and clearly he, he felt good. But, 
That was a good sign to see from uh, from from Pacom Dottie, the Knicks' first round pick. Six of eleven from the field, three of six from downtown, five boards, a steal, and sixteen points. And this is against you know some some uh, Charlotte reserves, but also some of the Charlotte Charlotte starters were out there. Gene Cherry, a four point play, yeah. So you know, given the. Um, Given the the injury to Shamit, you know, we're going to talk about this, but did Dadie make a case for potential rotation minutes once we get to 9, 10, potentially? Or, you know, just, just from a depth standpoint. 18 years old, nostalgic Nick. Now part of the wing factory. Isn't that nice? Isn't it nice when you could go from this team being desperate to get a wing to now saying they have the opportunity to slowly develop another wing to contribute at some point down the line. Maybe it's this year, maybe it's beyond. But, man, uh, uh, it's an embarrassment of riches here. And, hey, at 18 years old, who knows, man? Sky, sky could be the limit for this kid. But good job. And you also saw some of the cutting ability. That was one of his his skill sets that he came in with. Remember our guy David Zenon uh, put us on in the scouting report. And we have seen that in summer league and things of that nature. His ability to run the floor, fill the lane, cut to the basket, is it's good instincts for his age. So that was a good night. Good night for Pacom Dadier. 16 points, 5 rebounds, 3 of 6 from downtown, 6 of 11 from the floor. Jay Harlem World, stand up. How you feeling, man? What's going on? What's going on, Jay? I'm cooling. Yeah. Uh, just want to talk about. Uh, I like what we did tonight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I like what we did. We have to slow down on Dottie. You know. Yeah, that's right. One yeah, thing yeah slow down. See, now. Yeah. Got to slow down on him. He definitely looked like he can be something, but we got to slow down him. His feet are real, real slow on defense. Yeah. So we have to bring him down. We have to slow it down a bit. Hook Porty. I'm not on Hook Porty high, but he's way better than Sims. We've given Sims time and time again. He's just more active, and and that's what we kind of need, you know. So, and we're not expecting Hook Porty to play 20 minutes or anything like that. But little spot minutes, Hook Porty's gonna be better than Sims. Now, for campaign, I'm not the biggest campaign fan, never, mm-hmm. never have been. He is what he is. You know, he's going to come. He's going to give energy. I just still feel feel like he shoots too much of the three, you know, and I think in crucial games where we don't need that, he's going to do what he always does and pull and pull and pull. I think after all-star break, I think I think he's going to start for the majority of the season, and then also break when it's kind of like the trade deadline, I think we got to include him in any kind of deal and let Kolek take over. Kolek's going to mm. – Kolek, even if he's off, you see, seven assists, zero, zero turnovers inside the second quarter, he at least gets the offense going. And that's what we really need. We don't need a dude to come in and want to be special. That's what he did in Philly. That's what he did in the Suns. And there's a reason why he got packed up every place else. Because he does that. He's going to give you energy, but he's going to take the bad shots yeah. at the wrong time. Yeah. You know, that's just who he is. But Kolek, he's not going to play the first half. Like uh, like we already know. That's yeah. just Tibbs. That is what it is. But second half of the season, I hope Kolek gets some burn because he really can make the offense go, especially playing with better players. And yeah. just like last year, Precious did his thing. When everybody's saying, oh, we don't got a bench, we don't got a bench, you bring in Deuce, you bring it, you bring in Precious. Those two were the same guys that was holding us down last year. Not everybody in the NBA plays nine, nine or ten guys, but if you got a solid eight, we could be okay. 